we're going to go into the second question. Um, here we're dealing with, um, once again, an agent has reached out to us for some advice. Uh, they have a tenant, Bruno, uh, that is terminating their contract um, early, uh, right? And the end date for uh, the current visa agreement is only next year. But uh, then their rental is paid up to date and they have uh, paid their breach over to the agents, all right? Um, so they have been, they the agents has, have now informed the owner that the tenant uh, is given a notice to vacate the property at the end of November. Uh, the tenant uh, has given the 20 business days. Uh, the owner has only sort of responded now and informing us, uh, well, informing the agents that they now canceling their mandate with the agent and they and they will therefore source their own tenant moving forward. Um, so um, the crux of the question here is actually surrounding whether um, can one claim damages uh, for a specific month if they actually did not suffer damages and they perhaps did find a replacement tenant. Um, so to broaden the question that the agent is actually asking, the owner is now claiming that the tenant uh, pays him damages for the month of December. Um, and are they correct to say that the owner is not entitled for damages for, the, uh, for December as they will take occupation of the property and source their tenant. So there's not really a suffering of, the, of financial suffering there for the premature canceling of the lease. Bruno? So the land law of the Act specifically provides, and this is Section 14 of the Act, a tenant um, in these circumstances, a consumer, the landlord being a supplier, and this is the Consumer Protection Act, naturally, um, speaks, uh, Section 14 speaks about fixed term contracts and basically affords a consumer, the tenant, a way out of a contract if they don't want to be bound for the duration of the contract, right? So this was especially very nifty when it came to things like cell phone contracts and that sort of thing where, um, you know, you used to have a lot, a, a lot of time left on your contract and you need to get out of it, right? So same thing applies to property um, uh, property leases. The tenant can give the notice provided they, they do it with the correct time frames, which uh, from the sounds of it they have. So that's 20 business days. So this is a right that the tenant has. Whether the landlord accepts it or not is inconsequential. Uh, the, the tenant is allowed to get out. So now in the, the Act does permit or provides an allowance for the landlord to charge a reasonable cancellation penalty. Now, reasonable cancellation penalty, again, it's not properly defined. It's never going to be properly defined because I can imagine that there's going to be cases, a case after case after case that tries to define it. And uh, it, it's always going to be on a case by case basis. Where I do find comfort is that our law does have quite a good history when it comes to calculation of damages. Now, it's not exactly the same. So reasonable cancellation penalty versus quantifiable damages are two very different things. Quantifiable damages requires a level of proof. Um, it, it's, it, it, is, it is something that you'd have to go to court and actually prove that you suffered those damages, um, it, you know, be it in the form of the rental amount or whatever the case is. Whereas a reasonable cancellation penalty works slightly different. How, however, there are no predefined um, uh, concepts on how to actually calculate them. So again, the person works off the reason. So in a case like this, can I say what's reasonable? It's difficult. But what I can say is that if the landlord has a new tenant in for a specific month, then it's certainly not reasonable. And on the contrary, it would be unreasonable to charge a tenant for that month, even though the landlord didn't suffer any prejudice, didn't suffer any harm, didn't suffer anything whatsoever. Um, so there I would go, I would um, yeah, you know, put my neck out to say that it, it does sound like it is unreasonable. And what you're also going to find is that a lot of contracts uh, stipulate what the penalty amount would be. So, for example, some contracts would say that if there's early termination with a year left on the contract, the person would, uh, a penalty would be whatever, two months, as an example, right? Which people consider reasonable because sometimes it takes about two months to get somebody new on the property. Um, another piece of legislation that might assist the tenants in these circumstances is the Conventional Penalties Act. And in that legislation, it goes, look, you're allowed to charge a penalty contractually, but if the penalty is not um, 
does not measure against the actual prejudice suffered, the person responsible for paying the penalty can challenge that penalty. So in short, uh, even if the specific contract says that whatever, um, the landlord is entitled to charge for two months and that second month includes December, the Conventional Penalties Act would probably also work in favor of the tenant in arguing that two months it does is not measurable against the actual prejudice suffered given that the landlord um has a tenant for December. Um I hope that that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. Um it, absolutely it 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 makes absolute sense. I thank you very much, uh, Bruno. And I think uh, with those two questions, we are at the end of our episodes today. And then we'll be coming uh, again back next week with more questions from you guys and we'll provide some answers. So thank you very much for this week. And that's it. Cool. Thanks.